Hello, and welcome to Kaiser Reich. We are very close to crushing imperialism forevermore. Um, we have so much production, we don't have any idea what to do with any of it. We are running out of... Uh, I mean, sure, I guess. Uh, we need, we're running out of resources, uh, not out of rubber, uh, but we're running out of, uh, al aluminum, aluminium sources. Which means we're probably about maxed on, uh, America, I'm like, who's got all the aluminum? <laughs> America! Got it. Cool. Uh, so, you know. Our current plan is to... Uh, this isn't the optimal strategy, but our current plan is to uh, swing up north uh, through Argentina and Chile and, like, gradually cap capitulate uh, the various puppets, uh, swing up beat on the Bolivians. And then finally finish off America. Trade mission from the Australasian Union. The government of the Australasian Union has approached us regarding the possibility of a new bilateral trade agreement between our countries. In return for dropping the tariffs, in place, currently restricting imports, they promise to do the same for Chinese goods. Yeah, that would benefit both of us. Sure. Ah yes, and this is this is the the final. This is the final uh, of the the events that we're going to read. Uh, I've seen this uh, on uh, the internet before, so I'm a, it's, it's not like it's anything. It's just like saying, "Yeah, we did it." Uh, so here we go: the final victory over imperialism. For centuries, the winds of the great seas of the Nanhai and the Pacific blew to the Middle Kingdom, paying tribute to the great civilization state of China. The winds of fate also led tens of thousands of Chinese expatriates to seek new fortunes and homes across Asia, building diasporic communities in Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, and Thailand, everywhere they went, connecting Chinese people far and wide, despite regional and cultural differences. Truly, China's place in the world is in Asia. <laughs> okay, where else would it be? <laughs> Sorry, I hate to break that, but like, that's like saying... Truly, the United States of America's place in the world is in North America. It's like, yep, <laughs> that's where it is. But, like, I guess more metaphorically. Anyways, for the last century, however, this has not been the case. Okay, got it. Uh, um, uh, we have been humiliated utterly, not only by the Western imperialists who tore the nations of the East under their banner of colonialism, but also uh, the Japanese uh, uh, Woku. Is that a... <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's probably offensive. We took advantage of our decaying state to pursue their own imperialist ambitions. In our absence, the ever-burning cultural hearth of East Asia seemed to dim out, and darkness covered what was once maritime bliss. 
Now things are different. The Chinese Kuomintang has led the Chinese peoples to pursue their salvation from imperialism, and in doing so, we're able to proclaim the Republic of China, a new revolutionary and socialist republic, free of imperialist influences. Just with this strength that the Chinese, uh, that the army, navy, and air force of the Chinese Republic have been able to liberate and free thousands of our fellow Asian comrades across, th across Southeast Asia, we have even been able to bring the revolution to the far icy reaches of outer Manchuria, and our forces are able to liberate the Japanese workers from the chains of their tyrannical empire. It does not end here. China's reinvigorated strength, China's glorious history, and China's prestige calls for it to play an even larger role in the world. Only China is capable of bringing together the vast Asian peoples under the banner of pan-Asian anti-imperialism, and it does not stop there. It didn't. We have created a zone of security, uh, stretching from Honolulu to Melbourne, and covering every nation of the Pacific Island chain to India. What? The world see and rejoice, for the nightmare and darkness of imperialism has faded away, and the white sun of the east rises forth, shining over the world, under its brilliance forevermore. The wind of freedom blows across the Pacific. Plus 100 political power. Ah, okay, got it. Thank you for playing the left Kuomintang. We hope you had fun. Uh... Uh, Suzu and uh, Shanghai Shrek. That's a great name. <laughs> uh, enabling edit uh, naval editing of Liberation Army Division template and training or disbanding of units belonging to it. Clear division cap of Liberation Army Division. Okay, hopefully that doesn't screw everything up. Yeah, it does not look like it. Okay, cool. Uh, can we press additional putins? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, so I'm going to disable the Liberation Forces just to get rid of that pop-up. Uh, I'm going to build uh, more irregular infantry. I don't know why I built those many. I only need 18. Okay, cool. Do land reform. We did it! Yay! We might just do collaboration of the oppressed classes. Now that we have the, uh... Just the button. We can just press that button. Okay, so who's where? First of all, build that up. Second of all, Cross Asia. Let's spread the love around.
All right, we can uh, prepare our prepare for our assault. Hmm. We should probably land here and kind of like spread out, I guess. I don't know. Let's do a uh, historically unrealistic landing. But we have the resources necessary to like pull this off, so I think we should probably open with this open with these guys. Just they need to do that. They should do it. And we're going to start with the uh, infantry. Yeah, and we're just gonna try to position ourselves. Uh, lagging it up. We're doing it. We're lagging it. Uh, we're gonna position ourselves on the coast so that we can like deploy to uh, the invasion targets. We're gonna give people metals. We're gonna give them reduced supply consumption metals. Increased organization medals. Uh, I had previously selected that. I am going to select breakthrough. these boys I'm just going to over order just so I don't have to think about it because I'm just giving the supply. I'm just giving extra factories to my like to my allies uh, and yeah. That's easy. We invade South America. Kind of swing up, bash them up, dish bash, bosh them up. And then if we hit stalemate or once we're sort of like 
done with South America, we can swing up uh, and deploy from Kingston to invade, like, America. Well, probably to invade, invade Central America. And then we'll swing up and eventually crush them. Anyways. Last tack, yay, last tack. Start producing modern submarines again. I'll design a super heavy tank just for the heck, heck of it. Super heavy cannon! Wahoo! <laughs> Below, but look how slow we are. <laughs> That's gonna be so much armor. Anyways, uh, we have a lot of. Uh... That armor is not even that high. Like, I don't think this is a very efficiently designed tank. I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna use this. Like, it's way too late in the game to implement this. A breakthrough is not even that good. Eh, at least we have radio. I mean, yeah, I'll design one. I'm not gonna run it. Super heavy tanks is just not what we're doing this game. Uh, that's only twice as expensive as a- that's not even twice as expensive as the tanks I'm running. Armor 150, piercing 170. Armor 190, piercing 225. Yeah, that's a soft attack. Yeah, it's, this is- this is a better tank. That, that can be just like the dumping ground for all uh, excess production I acquire. And then, yes, fine. Um, I think we can now... Now would probably be a good time to transition these to just like the more armored division. We have the... We have the capacity to do that. So more armored division. That's max speed 12. Making it any better wider would actually be a liability it's got the anti-air it's got armored recon logistics light flame tank engineer yeah okay so i think we are now we're gonna name this like elite i don't know elite armor division uh so yeah we're gonna transition 
the basic armor division, the armor division. We're going to make this elite armored. So what's the difference between armor, the armor division? And yeah, they're running rangers. Yeah, I think that's fine. The running, it's the rangers versus the flame tanks. I think the flame tanks are probably better. I think just running the same stuff everywhere is fine. And then just training everyone up. Is it possible? Let me re. We're maybe reconfiguring our our strategy now that we actually have the space to do that. Yeah, we need a ton of mechanized equipment. We're actually good on modern tanks. We're good on that. Less good on that. Let me actually. Okay. I'm gonna try to bring everyone up. top uh let's hide that and that we're just gonna do planes okay just gonna do planes that we go fighters at the top I really don't need to go crazy with carrier stuff Strato bombers at the bottom. That's fine. All right, that'll do. Okay, so we're gonna cut that. We're gonna go infantry artillery. Probably do that. So, infantry, artillery, Trains, trucks, anti air, mechanized, we're gonna do this. Uh, or doesn't really matter, but why not? Yeah, okay, so. Armor. Obviously, we're doing it like that. Wow! Tungsten! We haven't needed tungsten ever. We've never needed it. And I was just like, it's a waste to build new tungsten. And now we're actually using all our tungsten. That's pretty cool. I still think it was a waste, but like, I mean, it's undeniably was a waste. So we're capital ships. Dreadnought at the top. Uh... gonna finish off I think we basically don't need any more of these right, we got 
modern heavy hulls, which I'm going to prioritize over cruisers. The, the battleships. We got a bunch of modern cruisers. Then we have uh, just gonna bring everything down. Okay, all right. Put cruisers at the bottom. Prioritize these boys. Other ships. We got submarines. Probably want more modern subs. That's a long-term thing. Oh, and look at that. We have such a well-ordered production line. It's like organized and everything. Cool. We, we need way more everything. Tungsten. For the first time, we need to ask for it. Here, Korea. I'll ask for some of yours. That'll do. Great. I don't need to really moan. Look how much production we have. And also, look who we're giving it to. I don't need to really worry about that. Okay. So... Maybe build some more of these. It's wild where I'm like, I should build more... I should build some more uh, naval production. Like, do I need more naval production? Ah, I forgot to do... Uh... Right, Macau I didn't get until recently, so... Gonna do Does Bhutan have any um army? No. They have no manpower, I think. Do they have any available manpower? They have enough gun. Well, no, they don't. Let me, uh. <laughs> Bhutan. Let me, uh. Give you a lend lease of. Now the game's gonna lag because I opened up the lend lease. Just have all my guns. Just have all the, these guns. And, I don't know, support equipment. There we go. Speaking of uh, stuff, Malta, do you have? Nope, no deployed army manpower. Thought I'd lend lease to you. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. Never wanted to release you to begin with. I wanted you to just be part of uh, in uh, Italy, but it wouldn't let me. Oh. It's a no, no, no way, Jose. I can select a preferred tactic for this character. Uh, you were in charge of right. Right through. Okay, so I, I was so funny where I'm like, I'm doing blah, 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 blah. Here is what I was doing, and then I got distracted. Making a mechanized division.
Oh, so truck drawn rocket artillery has slightly better versus motorized rocket artillery. What? What is the difference between truck drawn and motorized? Oh, motorized means it's on a on a truck. I'm gonna maybe do motorized rocket artillery. Just like a switching over to, to stuff. Better soft attack, better hard attack, better breakthrough, better piercing. Technically, a hardened division. That 50% apparently matters. Okay, so we have that. Uh, and that brings us to... These nerds. Mechanized division work. We don't have enough mechanized. Not even close. So remember that a massive amount of mechanized I wanted to produce. Time to just like uh, time to go all in on mechanized. Bonk. may want to transition these bike people to mountaineers. Can I do that? Fast our bicycle infantry. Redeployment mode means they're moving much faster. I'm like, how are they? How? <laughs> what kind of bicycle moves at 35 kilometers an hour? It's a rocket bike. Um, no. No, it's, it's the strategic redeployment. Um. I'm very low combat with. Yeah, I'll just transition, just to make it easier for everyone. Alright, and with that, questionable decision done. I can uh, change the icon of these folks to do that. Uh, with that questionable decision done, I'm going to call it here. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye!